everyone. I'm Bart, and I'm very happy to see you all at my presentation. Uh, why Kubernetes is the right, right place for your functions. Uh, our session will be divided into three main topics, and we'll start with a question about how to manage and operate uh, your serverless functions on Kubernetes. Then we'll move to face debugging, tracing, and monitoring. And before the end, our journey will finish with a topic of how to deploy to production your function using, using GitOps. But before that, let's talk a little bit more about Kubernetes, because why actually Kubernetes? Uh, currently, in my opinion, it's the best way to run your applications uh, into production. But what actually does it mean? It means that Kubernetes is battle-tested solution by thousands of companies, and some of them have even tens of thousands of nodes. And over the internet, we can find a lot of successful case studies of companies like Samsung or Ocado or ENG using Kubernetes on production. And it means a lot. It's also highly available. It means that all major cloud providers like AWS, uh, Azure, Microsoft Azure, or GCP offers managed version of Kubernetes. So if you want to create your own cluster, you can do it in a matter of minutes. It's also declarative. Uh, with Kubernetes, you can describe your whole infrastructure uh, as a code. And uh, right now, you can have not only single source of truth of your application, but also about your infrastructure. And if you will need in the future to move between uh, different cloud provider, uh, you can do it in a manner of hours, not months, like it was before. It's already widely adopted as by a lot of companies, and uh, every month there are new companies starting using Kubernetes on production. It also means that it's easy to find a support. And I'm not only talking about almost 12 thousand questions on Stack Overflow, but if your company needs some more tailored solution, there are plenty of them uh, offering commercial support. We know why, but what Kubernetes brings us, and we all start small, but with a success, we need to be prepared for quickly scale our application uh, for a traffic even 10 times higher than normally. And Kubernetes gives us the option to prepare for that, to plan it. And when there is a need, uh, we can scale our application even between multiple regions. And if something like that happens, I don't want to waste time thinking what to do with a container which died or is not able to handle traffic anymore. Because Kubernetes uh, restarts containers that died and it also uh, replaces them and reschedules them when nodes die. And uh, it removes them if they are not responding to health checks defined by you. It also not advertise them if they are not able to handle traffic. This is cloud native landscape, which was created by CNCF, so Cloud Native Computing Foundation a uh, foundation which stands behind Kubernetes, actually. And it is a landscape of brands, products, and tools which they think are important for a cloud world. And we can find here like container runtimes, container registries, service meshes, platforms, databases, uh, or serverless. And about serverless, I want to focus a little bit more because this year the new stack asked almost 400 developers using Kubernetes uh, if they are using serverless architecture of, or if they are plan to use it in the next 18 months. And 8% of them responded that they are already using tools like Kubeless or OpenFast 
and this number will triple in the next 18 months. So it is important for us as a community and industry to be prepared for that. And during the next slides, I, want, I will try to show you how. So we saw OpenFAS and OpenFAS uh, as a, one of the most popular tools there on the survey. Uh, it's very easy to use. And I want to show you because it is easy to use and uh, you are not limited by any language actually. Uh, because if you saw yesterday's presentations of Alex Ellis, uh, if you want to create your function in a COBOL, you can do it and you can run it as an OpenFast function. It also means that you are not blocked by the size of your function. And it's very helpful in a world of uh, machine learning or uh, AI. You are not also limited by time, maximal, maximum time of your function. And you can run it anywhere. So you can run it on any cloud provider. And actually, the funny thing is that you don't even need to use OpenFAST to run OpenFAST function because it is just a Docker container. Wherever you can use Docker containers, you can run OpenFAST function. You are deciding about the scale because you can run it on your local machine or you can put like a high traffic on your production cluster. It depends on you. So this is the very important part that you decide the limits. And uh, this is our community, which in 2016 um, started from one person, Alex, who is here with us. And right now there is more than 150 developers who committed to, to, to OpenFast itself. And actually, before I joined VMware to work on OpenFast, uh, I was also a part of this community and the really nice thing about our community is that the first day when I started uh, working on, on, on some task, uh, it was after an hour already merged into a production. So every week we have meetings on Zoom. So if you are interested into um, knowing a little bit more about OpenFAST, I encourage you to join our Slack channel and the information how to do that are on our documentation. I want to show you how easy actually it is to create and deploy your function to Kubernetes. And of course, I am a huge fan of Rust language, so uh, I would like to at least uh, use Rust as a language for my function here. This is a very simple function, uh, but what we can do with OpenFast is we can actually deploy a um, function which returns HTML. So we can render HTML. It is different than like on uh, AWS Lambda or other solutions where uh, it's not possible. So in our case, we will be just rendering some HTML. And the only thing which you need here to describe your function is this one YAM file. And in this file, we are um, deciding which language we want to use and like some other important things about the image of a Docker, Docker image, actually. And because it is very easy, calling this command fast up, actually we are calling three commands behind the scene. It is uh, fast build, which is just building our container. Uh, fast push, which is happening right now, it's sending the, uh, our repository. Yeah, and right now we are sending this image to Docker Hub in that case. And when this will finish, we will be deploying it to our cluster. And there is no magic behind that. It is simple few, few files. Uh, in, by default, OpenFAST uh, supports, I don't even know, eight or 10 languages, but there are plenty of them like Rust, uh, which are created by the community. And yeah, it's already there. So we can go to our function, and that's it. This is a simple function created by Rust, 
And to prove you that it is working on Kubernetes, uh, let's go to Kubernetes dashboard. So going to namespace created for our functions, uh, we can see some functions which are already deployed here. And as we can see 58 seconds ago, we deployed Trust in Rust, which is the name of my function. And uh, using that, we can see the, some basic information about uh, the resources which, which we need to, which our function is using uh, in Kubernetes. We can see like events related to the function. So if something will be going wrong with the function, we will immediately see that here. Like basic information about the labels, annotations, uh, which are used. So let's see also some logs from Kubernetes. I'm here using Stern, which is like quite interesting tool for uh, logs. In Kubernetes, it's much easier to, to manage logs, your logs of your functions, or not only functions, because you can use it for your Kubernetes application. Just we have an access to full logs of Kubernetes pod here. <coughs> okay, so we saw how to deploy our function. Let's go back to our presentation. What we actually saw is uh, we created a new function. Uh, I showed you that it is, uh, it is, it was deployed on Kubernetes, and we saw some logs of that function. And I didn't show you how to scale it from zero because that's that's what I want to show you. Okay, we are waiting out when our function will be terminated, and then let's try. And let's see what will happen when we will try to call this function again. And of course, it's not working as I expected. Yeah. But I probably didn't, didn't talk enough with demo gods to, to, to see everything which I wanted. So don't worry. But normally, uh, what should happen is um, even if there is no replicas, after two seconds, the new replicas will be spawned, and it is done by OpenFast. Uh, so this is actually quite, quite, quite funny thing because if we don't need it, we don't need to use the resources. If there is a lot of traffic going to the function, uh, we can have like uh, multiple replicas, which we can define how many of them we need. The new stack also asked uh, more than 250 developers. What are they, their pain, pain points related to serverless? And 60% of them responded that they had some problems with debugging and tracing. And almost 30% of them responded that they have problems with lack of skills. And I don't know how many of you have any problems with debugging and tracing before, because I had a lot of them <laughs> before. And let's focus on the first part. So during the next demo, we will see four of the, the tools present here, and there are a lot of already existing tools help, helpful for monitoring and debugging our application in Kubernetes. And let's see that. We will start with debugging, and let's, see, let's assume that we have a function which is problematic for us. This is just a si simple function, um, but what we will do, it is a Node.js function. What we can do with OpenFast is uh, we can use built-in Node.js uh, debugging option. So the only difference uh, with the function before is that we are passing the additional parameter to our function as an env environmental variable, it's an inspect. And if we will po forward the port of debugger, this is default debugger port. Uh, I already configured before uh, the debugger into VS Code. If you need, you can do it in whenever text editor or, or even in uh, Chrome if you want. So we can attach to this port. And now, uh, if we will try to fire it again, yeah, we are in the context of the function. 
So it is completely the same as if you would like to uh, do it locally. So we have access to all uh, variables inside and the context, and it's much, much, much easier to debug. So, and, and actually on the, uh, one of the yesterday's presentations, there was said that it is impossible to debug it uh, locally, and we showed that it is actually possible, and we can use that because Kubernetes gives us this possibility, and with OpenFast, it is very, very easy. And let's go uh, a little bit further about monitoring. I don't know how you can see it, but by default, uh, we are supporting uh, Grafana dashboards and with information about uh, how often our function was called, how much how many times our function, all our functions were called inside our cluster, about informa information from Prometheus about uh, execution time or how many replicas are currently running into the Kubernetes cluster. And similar information uh, we can see in our panel. This is our panel. And this is a funny thing because we can even quickly deploy with some information about like your, your default functions. Uh, but if we want to know a little bit more, uh, I want to show you uh, with Cloud, which is one of the tools, one, one of the tools which we can use to monitor our cluster. And by default, we have we can see all of our pods or of our functions deployed in our cluster uh, with information if something is going on between these functions we, we can see a connection so currently we can see that Pro, to our gateway is talking to Prometheus uh, fast idler which is actually responsible which should be responsible for scaling uh, from some replicas to zero so if you are not using and you w want to scale your function to zero uh, it is possible by fast, fast filler. And if we open the function, we will see a connection from the internet to the gateway then and from the gateway to the function. But if we want to know a little bit more, uh, WeWorks actually prepared a dashboard uh, especially for us, for OpenFast, where we can see information similar to Grafana about the Request per second to our functions, red metrics from uh, Prometheus about time, uh, every function. This is the debugging example because uh, when we assign the breakpoint, uh, before we release the breakpoint, it was waiting. So, and after like a 10 or 15 seconds, it's timeouting. So we can see immediately here this information. And information about the functions which succeeded or failed. And it's the same thing as how many replicas per function there are, because you can decide if there is uh, high traffic, how much maximally, what's the amount of replicas uh, which you can have with your functions. So we saw how easy it is to debug your, our application and how quickly we can monitor and basically debug our network traffic and some basic information about uh, like red metrics from Prometheus. And if we want to go a little bit further with tracing of our function, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Istio, which is a service mesh solution, um, which to every our uh, to all of our ser uh, service is adding like a proxy uh, sidecar component, uh, which without interfering of, from with our code gives us like a traffic management, so. Uh, we can decide uh, how much traffic is going to the one particular version of the function. So if we want to create some kind of A-B tests or um, other things related with that, it's very easy. It's also like hardening the security of Kubernetes cluster by offering like mutual TLS between endpoints. And it is also very easy to observe what exactly is going on with the request to our function, as we can see here. Uh, this is the ENV function. We can see how much time it took 
in which part of our application, which component of, of uh, OpenFAS. And, and, and actually here, there is a Canary deployment because with Istio, quite quickly, we can create a Canary deployment with blue and green version. And on this screen, we can see that the green uh, version actually failed. And it's very, very easy to monitor it using Grafana, like here. OK, so we are talking about monitoring, about tracing, and uh, about debugging. But what with the second point of the pain points? How many of you are using it on a daily basis? Yeah. So what if I could tell you that Git is the only skill which you need to manage your cluster? Yeah, it's, it's really nice. And this is actually, uh, GitHub is ex exactly about that. I really like this quote from Alexis Richardson from WeWorks, which I believe, uh, who I believe is a creator of the term GitOps. And what can be described can be automated and describe everything code, config, monitoring, and policy, and then keep, keep it in version control. And this is exactly GitOps. GitOps puts Git in the middle of your cluster, and then uh, it's responsible for managing it just for you. What are currently available solutions for Kubernetes to implement GitOps? Uh, we have quite fresh tool, which is Jenkins X, which was uh, released, I think, like three months ago. We have WeFlux and OpenFast Cloud, which uh, we'll be talking a little bit more. Mm. What is Jenkins X? Probably all of us had experience with Jenkins. And Jenkins X is native native solution for CI, CD, just for Kubernetes. And they tried to create a tool which is much more opinionated and easier uh, to manage than Jenkins. Because Jen with Jenkins, you can do one thing in a thousand different ways. And it is a little bit different with Jenkins X um, because they wanted to make it much, much more smooth, smooth than normally. It's by default, when you create your pull request, it's spawning your uh, preview environment. And then uh, you can like you are receiving an URL address and you can test whenever you want. After that, if we will merge the pull request, uh, there is new staging environment uh, deployed, which we can test even more. And these two steps are automatic. But there is a first step, third step which we need to do manually if we want to promote it to production. If we already tested the um, application on staging, just using JX promote on or writing the comment uh, inside the repository, uh, we can promote our application to production. But as we saw, it is quite complex because even if it is more opinionated than Jenkins, it's still, Jenkins is still like a pipeline, a pipeline engine inside. So it is quite big, quite heavy solution, uh, which gives you a lot of, of features, but with also, which is also a little bit different than with Flux, which is much, much, much smaller. And with Flux is working by default as a, uh, Kubernetes operator, and its role is to watch your config inside your Git repository, and also watch your images in Docker Hub or other uh, image repositories. And if something will change, it will implement it and deploy it into your cluster uh, immediately. And because of that, uh, you are deciding what is actually the building solution or what is the CI solution which actually will build your uh, Kubernetes application. And it's, as it's working inside your cluster as an operator, uh, there is no need to have any additional um, service or, or infrastructure for that. And it is very lightweight. Uh, it's very, very easy 
to observe the state of your whole applications because of the GitOps, uh, which, uh, which is like the basic thing behind the tool itself. And by default, as I said, uh, Reflux is watching of your config inside the Git repository and also your Docker registry. And if something there will, will happen, uh, it will react and deploy the image or change the state of your configuration of your cluster. And that's, that's, that's what Reflux is doing. And there is a third thing, which is OpenFAS and OpenFAS Cloud. And OpenFAS Cloud actually is, I think, the first solution built just for your functions. And the nature of GitOps behind, which stands behind OpenFAS Cloud um, and built just for a function gives, it, uh, gives, gives us a very powerful but lightweight tool, which, is, which can be self-hosted, is very portable, and uh, currently it supports uh, GitLab and GitHub. So if your company has need to uh, be fully on premises, uh, you can use OpenFast Cloud inside with a GitLab. And um, if we will see in, in a minute, uh, we can change just, if we need to change something, we can do it via changing our repository. And we do, it will immediately deploy our function. And it's very uh, easy to integrate. And uh, with GitLab and GitHub, we have statuses, status changes. So when we, uh, we will commit something, or we will see immediately if something goes wrong with your deployment or if it succeeded. So let's see it. Currently, uh, our deployment is in the, pro the process starts. So, but before it will finish and we will deploy our new function, let's see how the dashboard for OpenFast Cloud looks like. Uh, here we can see uh, the function with the like, information about the repository name and the indication if the repository is private or not. Because if you want, uh, you can use private repositories from GitHub and it's just working right away. In information about uh, replicas, uh, and we can also see uh, logs of the function. Going a little bit more, a little bit further inside, uh, we would see the information about amount of invocations to this function. We can, uh, if we want to deploy that function to our different cluster, we have in all the informations which we need to, to deploy it locally. So let's see if it's, I can show our already existing community cluster. Um, this is the cluster. Uh, if you want, if you are interested in this, uh, you can test it. Uh, just write to, to Alex or uh, go to our Slack and uh, you will have an access to this community cluster. Uh, unfortunately, this demo didn't go as I planned, <laughs> but uh, it can be related with the internet, so but I don't want to debug it now, <laughs> unfortunately. And summing this presentation, what we saw is that actually Kubernetes is a really good place for our serverless architecture, and that there is already a lot of existing tools, very, very helpful, which we can use also to manage our functions. And I saw I showed you OpenFast, uh, because this is the tool which I know the best, but there are a lot of them which you can play with, which you can use. And OpenFast is the thing which is working natively with Kubernetes, but if you need, it can work on Docker, Docker Swarm or um, AWS, Fargate or other things. It's also, there's a, a lot of tools for monitoring, a lot of these tools uh, which actually can pick the one which you like the most, uh, which will be working exactly the same for your functions on Kubernetes, like every other application. And it's very easy to give your developers the chance to focus on the code of your functions, 
with GitOps and we've automated uh, continuous integration and deployment to production using GitOps. So if you want, get involved with OpenFAS and try our workshops. There are 12, uh, 12 uh, like lessons. And thank you very much. Thank you.